And a good sonar, of course, is really important for me. You know, I, I like the big units, and I don't use four or five units like a lot of guys are doing now. I still use two, but I memorize the buttons really well to where most of these graphs now, they have memory buttons like the Hummingbirds and Lawrence's, and you can, you can go into like 10 pages within one, a button or two. And I think the guys that don't, maybe can't do that, and that's why they have two graphs. I always make fun of them. It's like, what's your memory short? Because they have like so many of them. And there's, guys that, there's a lot of guys that run five graphs. And that's the power draw. I don't know how I do that. I run both my live holes a lot of times on manual. And, and I have lithium batteries, and I don't know how they keep their batteries charged. I keep them, keep them from dying. But uh, it's also a lot of noise. But a lot of them just keep one for map and then one for sonar. And I've actually seen guys that use one, just one. And they had the third one for just like side scanner. And one for down scan, and one for like sonar and, and down scan. But I just kind of go through the pages. I, I, if you ever, if, I mean, I don't show that stuff on TV, but I always have a hand up on the graph. I'm always just pressing buttons and back and forth pages and down scan. I use my side scan a lot, and, and um, you know, as I go, you know, most of that's manual anyways, like the, uh, the widths and stuff. So as I get deeper, I go to a slower speed. You know, I, I do all that, and I'm just trying to keep that picture as clear as possible. So I don't know if you guys had the side scanners, but you know, the deeper you go, the the slower you, you, you do your speed, just like on the sonar, and you get a sharper picture. And as you go shallower, you speed it up. And you know, if you go five feet or less, I go almost to like seven or eight. Compared to like when I'm in 60 or 80 feet, I'm like at two or three on the speed. And that's with the sonar too. Most of them are about close to the same sonar, down scan, and uh, the side scan. So that's why I most mess with the most, and that's why you, that's my that's my my most crucial tool when I'm learning a new lake is a is a sonar. And uh, you know, I'm not the Phoenix, of course. I'm not the Phoenix, but uh, the tool I use the most, I have my most attention to, is always that sonar unit. The the graph itself, the map. Um, whenever I go somewhere on these new lakes and I'm running around, I always run at a speed I can read my graph good at, which I notice a lot of guys back east will wide open to an area and they'll wide open to another area. They don't. I'm one of the few guys that actually kind of puts it like 40, 45, and I just watch my graph. I'm trying to see bait. I'm trying to see thermocline areas change. Sometimes they'll get a rise or lower in a thermocline. You'll see all that at, at speed. And I notice a lot of guys that don't do that. Uh, maybe it's because I try to learn lake myself. And, but um, I graph on pad a lot. So if we, like the, I'm sure uh, Russ can do it. When you, when you rig your boat, there's also ways you can rig your side scanner under the water. Like when you're running, I do that sometimes. Like at the St. Lawrence, I'll probably, I haven't done it yet, but I usually put a bracket at the bottom of the boat. So I have two brackets. I just haven't had, I haven't had a use for it this year. And you can actually put your side scan bracket in the water. So when you're running 45 mile an hour, it shows up just like it does when you're going five mile an hour. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I learned New Lakes. That's how I learned uh, New York, uh, Buffalo in three days. Two and a half, never been there before. And I got second in the tournament, but I learned it. And Edwin thought I got his waypoints off somebody's graph. He said, you saw my waypoints. I'm like, I burned 20 gallons in a four mile stretch. I didn't see your waypoints. And I just, I gritted it on pad. And I couldn't go over 45, but I did 40. And it showed me everything like, uh, Everything that my graph had showed me at, at idle, it showed me at, at speed, 30, 30 mile an hour. I mean, it shows you just speed, speed, uh, speed up your, you speed up your chart speed, and you work with your sensitivity a little bit. But it shows up just like you're idling, at 30 mile an hour. So, it's, and it shows the hills better. Like when you go over like hills and drops, you're going faster. So it's uh, it's easier, easier to read a, a, a steepness of the brakes. Like you know, with your sonar, you can tell exactly how steep a brake is. Is we're so used to it and. Usually when you're running at speed, you kind of see it drop off. You know that's a pretty steep break. And when you're idling, it kind of goes like that. You know what I mean? On a side scan, it does the same thing as when you're running with the sonar. So it shows the brakes really good. You can kind of, so that way you can learn it quicker. You can kind of follow those ridges like that. And uh, it, it's, about, it's about 45, and it, it'll knock it up. I, I learned that pretty quick. With the chart speed? Seven or eight. You can do six or seven, eight. I mean, you'll play with it. You'll get a nice, clean image. And, and you can still go to 140 feet out pretty good and see everything. But it worked. I've done it twice. I've done it like three times. I, did, I learned Kentucky that way. Because Kentucky, the Kentucky Lake, the, the changes are so su subtle on that lake. As far as like when you find a school of fish, there's no rhyme or reason why the fish are there. It's, like kinda, it's crazy. No, but a lot of times, if, if you're idling, you can't see the changes. But if you run it, then you start to see why those fish are there. Because maybe there's a... A slight depression like that, but it's so slight. If you idle it, you can't tell the difference. But I found on that lake, when I started running it, 
I found a few schools. I found a ton more just because I could run them and find them. It was like, and I, I used a sonar for that uh, most of the time, but that side scan is, I mean, you can see the hard so cell bed. The, the, yeah, you just put a bracket instead of being up, so when you come off pad, it's in the water, you put the bracket at the bottom, so the bottom of the side scan. And the, bo the bottom, the side scan's actually underwater. Like, when I mean, you're running. So it's actually in, it's actually below the hull of your boat. So you, you mount it so it's actually below the hull? Yeah, but as soon as you go fast, it'll come up, it'll knock up. But you can go 40 plus, you can go a little over 40 mile an hour, which is pretty fast, and not knock it up. Mm -hmm. You know, do it nice and tight and get it on there. You know how the bracket works, the breakaways? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you can go, I, I mad graphed until the end, I found out how fast I could go, but at the end of the day, I opened it up, and I kind of like, I started going fast, 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 and all of a sudden I lost my signal. It was like 50 mile an hour. But I told uh, a few guys about that, my friends, and they're all, they're all doing it now. But it works really good. Um, yeah, that, that was, we're still talking about that. But that's just that's how I learn lakes too. That's one of the things I do. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I do watch a graph all the time, everywhere I go, even if it's deep. I'm always paying attention to the graph. Uh, I turn them off a lot of times. I'm worried about that, and I always. Like when I start fishing, I always turn my back graph off. And that was, I think Humminbird put that switch on there because of me. I told him the next graphs I came out with had that option where you could just press the power button and turn the graph off. I told them to do that and then they did it. But they don't sponsor me or anything. But they, uh, I, I, I kept telling them, uh, that Humminbird and, and Lorance, they needed to make it quick. So you could just, like a button or two, you turn your sonar off. Because we used to have to go into pages and go down the sonar and turn it off. And to turn it back on, you do the same stupid thing. I'd go back up there again and turn it on. So now it's just like one button, I always turn it off now, since it's easy now. But whenever I go to the front, I always turn my back graph off. This extra noise, and also they still get interference with each other a little bit. 